call the meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is public comment. This is for comment for anything that's not listed on the agenda. No parking for those people. Um, I just, I don't want this in the minutes, I just want to apologize to you, the, the, everybody here, for my father's out for at the last meeting, he can have a short fuse if any, so my apologies. Next on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. <coughs> Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion, please. Next item is the road reclassification and discontinuance decisions. So, we have our choice. We go through this. We go road by road. Well, the devil has some information. I think you should I can share with this. I can share with the board. It was just the conversation that I had with the town attorney recently, and he had mentioned that typically when these uh, uh, processes happen, there's uh, the opportunity to have the road that will not change classification at all, will not be recommended for any change at all, could be discussed in general. And then if the board uh, chose, it could have, uh, uh, it's called a deliberative session, which is actually what is recommended by a town attorney, and it's a discussion that uh, a process should happen in that process. Uh, so I wanted to share that with the, with the board before we continue. What, Adolfo, why, why is that the recommendation of the attorney? Uh, this process is what he re refers to as a quasi-process, so it's not one that's required to have the minutes the general knowledge, uh, the general um, record keeping, it's more of just the fact that the decision was rendered, the board reviewed it, uh, the decision is going to be reported by the clerk, <coughs> and so it's just a, a recommendation by the attorney to actually have this deliberative session so that the board can speak about every potential option that, that they would like to be considered. I guess I'm going to understand still why that is the actual recommendation. If I understand why it's allowed, yeah. But what's what 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 interest of the a potential interest of the board would serve for to enter a deliberative session per the attorney's recommendation? It's just a tool that's available to the select board, so that the select board can, can have a discussion through a deliberative session. So essentially, what would happen is select board would recess the meeting, enter deliberative session. Uh, potentially discuss options that are available that uh, a member of the community has shared with us about potential business expansion, something that may not be made available to the public yet, something they might, may want to keep private. Uh, so that's where the select board can discuss those options. After the fact, they then end the recess, return to the meeting, and announce the decision. Right. So it's it's the the development review board. Yeah. So we're talking about real specifics about something and trying to figure out if you can compromise on things to come up with a final written decision. So you found that to be a useful tool in that setting that, that people make decisions that you feel are better than they would have otherwise been made. Mm -hmm. Just gives you that ability. Okay, so can I uh, make a comment? Yeah. <clears throat> so for those of you in the room, most of you know that I was not here in present last meeting when you guys all had your public meeting. <coughs> but I do want to share with you that I have viewed the video numerous times, and so I do know what a lot of you said um, and the comments that were made uh, that were available to me through Orca Media's ability to record that. And um, I've spent a great deal of time thinking about this and looking into a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, probably well over 45 to 50 hours now. And so um, <clears throat> uh, I just want you to all know that any decisions I make, I'm very well informed of what the opinions were, what the thoughts were. I did, went, I did go on every site visit, so I was present at every site visit, even though some people weren't there. 
So just to clear the record here that I may not have been at the last meeting, but I'm certainly up to speed on what went on during that meeting. Yeah, take them one by one again. Well, <clears throat> here's what I'd like to do. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I think my thoughts are that if there's anybody here that has anything to add to what was discussed and maybe not discussed at the last meeting, I'd like to hear it now. And then after that, I would like to uh, move into the deliberative session part of this. I may have one more suggestion. Um, one option would be if, if the board were to uh, consider not taking any action on any one of the roads, it could make a decision before entering deliberative session, or it could make all the decisions during deliberative session. So uh, really, what, and it's up to the select board, it could enter deliberative session, work through the process, or it could, and any decision that it doesn't think it needs to take on any roads, it could make it before deliberative session and then enter into deliberative session. This is an option. I'd like to ask a question about the process. I, I don't really understand. Um, the deliberative session, that means that you guys would like excuse yourself from this room and then we wouldn't have any like um, input into the decision making process at that point? Is that what you What we would do is give you the ability to add to the record or to the discussion anything that we haven't heard yet or new information you want the board to consider and then the board recesses the meeting and meets and hammers through each one of them and, to the decision and so the board would meet privately then correct to make the decision okay. and that meeting wouldn't be videotaped or no so we wouldn't have an idea of who said what or who voted on what or correct the decision that comes out has to be signed by all the members yeah i mean i'd like to know like how everybody on the board votes mm -hmm. on you know and, and honestly i'd like to know I, I, i'd like to in the interest of transparency be able to see you know and be part of the discussion you know so I, i'm not really i mean i, I Let's have it out in the open. So go for any other new information? I'm not concerned. I'm uh, sticking my guns here. No. Okay. So do we have anybody who wants to present more information? About their road or what we've gotten to date? I've submitted a bunch of information. Start, I just wanted to confirm. You gotta give your name for the record first. Charlie Bacon. Thank you. Um, I had submitted a bunch of rec uh, written stuff. I just wanted to confirm that you all had that. Yep. Yep. You okay. all had that and I read it. Okay. Yep. Thanks for sharing that too. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I had, could I ask a question of the board? about the topic? Sure. Can you speak to the public good, the public good that is planned to be achieved? Uh, I'm sorry, this is this is a CJ Stump from East Randolph. Um, so the, my understanding is that any road reclassification or, or that the town's management of the roads is for the public good. Um, we heard that, um, Adolfo, that you had asked the road crew about whether they had any concerns and that they had given you a list. And so that seems important. But then in the hearings, what became clear is that the public good was larger than, than one single group of people, the ones that are equipped and hired to keep our roads maintained and clear and passable and that is the question that i wanted to have answered because i went back through the record and i went to the orca recordings too and went back through the board meeting minutes and i wasn't sure i saw that picture of looking at the whole town our whole community and the consideration so i thought 
I guess I should ask you before I, you know, just what is the public good? A number, I get a number of different things in conversations with the town's attorney. Uh, it's an, un, an all-encompassing phrase that includes any number of things. It includes public safety. It includes access to recreational opportunities. It includes access to you know any number of different things. And whether the elected officials and town staff, after considering all the facts that were submitted by town residents or through the site visits, uh, or any number of information that is available, all plays part into whether it is part of the public good, whether maintaining a road will benefit the town as a whole, or whether the town as a whole will benefit from maintaining a road to class three standards or class four standards or whatever standards are imposed by the state. So that's what, and it's a, it's a vague term, but it means whether it's a public good to the entire town to maintain a particular road to a certain standard, including in addition to the safety concerns or any issues of, of a public vehicle making its way up to a road. And I think the other piece that always defaults public good to Perry in the article that, uh, or the, the mm -hmm. paper that was written that, that we all read, was the definition of necessity. Necessity goes along with public good. So, you know, generally what is public good, but what is a necessity to the town, to the taxpayer, to the general public for whatever that service may be. So that's really how I looked at it, was what is a necessity to the town of Randall? I'm looking at this. Could you go and look at that in reverse? I have a question. Hang on just a second, please. If you look at that in reverse, CJ, when you are trying to take land to put a road in, mm -hmm. and you're reviewing, you know, whether it's there's a need for it, part of the hurdle you have to get over is that what is the need for the community, for the town, for the public piece of it. So if it's uh, to access um, a recreational opportunity, if it's to access a um, an area where you're going to put a school, where you're going to put some type of public infrastructure uh, or something that's there to benefit the public, then that becomes your your reason, if you will, <coughs> when you go through the court proceedings and all that for a necessity hearing. So it's a the definition of it is you know basically what is what is the public gain by having that road and owning that right away or that infrastructure. So in addition to that, I want to share with you folks <laughs> some stuff that, so, so like I told you, I struggled with a lot of this. And this is a very difficult situation for all of us. So <clears throat> what I did was I started researching what's the definition of public good. And this came about, I think, when Mr. Sargent, in his comments in the last meeting, said, what's the criteria? You know, why is this, why, why now, okay? So the town does have a road policy that I believe was adopted in 1996, I think. So you can go back and you can look at that, okay? And there's standards in there for how roads are created, how roads are discontinued. And so a lot of this stuff goes back ages and ages and ages, okay? And so in this process, I found a document that was written by Paul Gillies, and you know, he's our attorney. And he's well respected throughout the state regarding public roads, highways, town roads, those kind of things. And if you read through that document, you will find that at different points in time, public good changed. So there was mentions in that situation where years ago, public good was to pull timber out so that communities could flourish because of logging, okay, and sawmills. And then it became, we need to get products to market. And so then farmers became necessary for public goods. So we needed highways or roads to go to different farms to, so that they, they could get their products to town. So over the years, public good has changed. And so, like I said, I struggle with this whole process. And you know, I, I know most everybody in the room. I know most everybody's roads. Been here all my life. I know exactly what happened on those roads. I know some of these roads are discontinued. I got out of Beers Atlas, you know, and I looked at all these roads and I said, oh, well, that one there used to go through to here. And how come it stopped? Well, because that property owner bought all that land around that road and he asked the town to discontinue it. 
Well, they didn't continue the, discontinue the road to his property because at that time, it may have been a farm. So the public good was, we're gonna keep that road open so we can get his products to market. So through this process, you know, it's, it's, it's been an evolving thing and it's called change. And in my opinion, you know, we're at a, a different juncture here. And in this particular community, you know, we struggle with, and my pet peeve here is, you know, economic development, you all know that, okay? I was, I ran on that platform and I'm standing behind that platform. And so, you know, I think that if we were a healthy, vibrant community, we wouldn't have this conversation. Other towns, you know, don't, they don't worry about it. You know, they're doing other things. Um, they've got more resources. They have a higher, stronger tax base. We don't have that right now. We're struggling. For those of you who might not realize this, our grand list does not grow as fast as our need for cash to support the community. And so therefore, that is why I think that this community needs you know, an economic development boost. And I've been working hard at that. Trini's been working hard at that. I think all of us on this board are looking at that. This is why we made the decision to hire an economic development coordinator. And unfortunately, this situation with roads right now has become a hot button because we're covering the expenses of roads that I personally don't think we should plow or should we should take care of because there was some side deal made 30, 40 years ago or the road was discontinued. So like I said, I struggled with it. I spent well over 45 hours looking into this. Chris's comments you know, triggered my thinking process. And so it's boiled down to what's the public good currently to keep these roads open. So that's my comment and that's where I stand. Let's make a comment, Tim Angel and Seth Randolph. <clears throat> if you're saying it's not in the interest, you know, public good, then any street in the village or any road in this town that just has residents in it are exactly the same situation as these 17 roads. So why is it these 17 roads aren't the public good but the other ones are? Not necessarily. Some of these res these are serving residents. Okay, so some of these roads serve multiple residents. There's multiple landowners on both sides of them. You can't shut down a road that's got multiple properties beside it. But there's other roads here that are one home roads that should not be taken care of by the public. And so the town, in my opinion, is taking care of a lot of stuff we shouldn't be taking care of. Different levels. There's certain things that are important. Okay, I'll give you a perfect example. Your situation, okay? You've got a public good on your road, okay? We need that, that, that uh, dry hydrant, okay? If every one of these roads had a dry hydrant on it, then my decision would be easy, but it's not that simple. So I, that's, where I, that's where I'm at here. And I don't know where the rest of them are, but that's, my, that's where I'm standing. I would like to make a comment. Just a second. We had somebody ahead of you in the back. Can you just state your name for the record? Yes, uh, Diana Darty, Jackson Road, Rendell. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, I don't hate to say this, I've been a nurse for nearly 40 years. And I think one of the biggest issues that I have with the closure of any road, if we, into, if we wanted a home on a Class 4 road, we bought one. It would have been assumed that we would maintain it, you know, so forth. But... If you change, like, let's say, Jackson Road to a Class 4 road, we won't have the maintenance, we won't have the plowing, we won't have the sanding, anything. You are actually endangering people's medical safety and lives by closing a road that is currently a Class 3 road. We bought it as a Class 3 road, the expectation is it would maintain that. So if I have a fire at my house, I have a heart attack, ambulances and um, fire trucks cannot get to my home and I die. You know, so it's more of a, I know that sounds really extreme, but being a nurse for 40 years, I'm telling you it happens all the time. You know, and I understand the need to budget. I uh, totally get that, I have done that in the past, but you know, you have to consider people's welfare. And when we're talking about community good, is not the safety, medically or physically, the properties that pay taxes in this community not worth saving. You know, um, we have farmers that need to get their crops to market. You know, you're messing with people's livelihoods uh, as well as their, their uh, <coughs> medical well-being. And that may not seem important to this board, 
I can't say if it is or not. You know, with all due respect, you'll have a very hard decision to make. But you've got to consider what you're you're doing. I understand if a road one owner and they want it shut down. We're not asking for our roads to be shut down. We're asking for them to be maintained and open. I understand you have budgets. I understand there's money involved in this, but um, you know it all ends up being how to bring those to standard. And even if you took one road a year or one road every two years and maintain that road and get it bring it to standard, you know, um, you know, some of us are willing to even give some land uh, in order to uh, accomplish. <coughs> So I think that that needs to be a, a consideration before you make your decision. So I guess I'd ask, where would you draw the line, right? So my neighbor has a driveway that's one point something miles long. Right? Has to take care of it themselves. Their medical challenge isn't any different than your medical challenge. So if we use that argument, where do we draw the line of whose road do we maintain at a class three level and whose do we not? I mean, using the medical argument, we should go through every single homeowner's property and maintain their driveway. Well, I didn't ask for the driveway. I said the road leading to the driveway. But my driveway is very long, and right. I only maintain that. So isn't my neighbor's, right? So where does that but mean we should pick theirs up as a but, you, but, you're, but you're pushing the cost of road maintenance onto the property owners. It's not even the cost, Matt. You, I mean, the, the, the issue there is quite different where, you know, if your neighbor decided to build a house and build a driveway and maintain it, that was his choice at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, I understand that. Bought, I understand your, your argument on the property. Those of us so. who bought you know, homes on these roads, bought them, you know, we went in with our eyes wide open. Yeah. I could have chosen to buy a house that was on a road that I needed to maintain, um, but, but that's not what was offered. Right. And, and you know, we all, in, in most cases, paid a premium for that and continue to pay you know, higher taxes because of that. No, yeah. right. So you, you're, you're talking about like driveways. Yeah, and yeah I'm not, I'm, I'd like to, you know, we should explore the higher taxes. Well, you, I mean, you can look at the, uh, the listing sheets and, and it shows um, very uh, different grades for, mm -hmm. uh, for the building site. And, and Our appraisal partially mentions the town road as part of the value. But that, you know, that is a different situation where everybody here bought their properties knowing that that was, uh, that was part of it. And, and by taking that away, uh, you're, you're essentially taking what, what you purchased as an asset and turning it into a liability. And that, that makes the resale value significantly diminished. Yeah. And you're throwing that on potential mortgage impacts to, to then. Well, that's the idea. I know you've got it in the original. Okay, right. so we're, we had somebody else. Was, <coughs> originally, this whole thing came about because we all received a letter saying that the reason for this was safety issues. So my question is, all of a sudden here tonight, it seems to be everything but those <coughs> safety issues. When we specifically asked, is, is this a money issue? We were told no. So why are we having all of this conversation now if it were just originally a safety issue? The main issue we had When is we were safety. trying to resolve those, and we thought if those safety issues could be resolved, then there should not be a problem any other way. So when you look at the safety issue on a lot of these roads, it ties all of it in, right? So as Perry was explaining, a lot of these were through roads. And then either prior to or during the ancient roads process that the state had us go through, a lot of these were given up beyond a certain point. And so now what you have is basically a width of right away between 10 and 14 feet seems to be what most of these are, uh, the dead ends. So when you go in to maintain that road, the town's required to stay on their own right away. Mm -hmm. So when we go in on that right away, we're supposed to be coming back out on that right away. And in a lot of these cases, we're turning around in people's yards and <coughs> on land that's not part of the town's <coughs> operating right away. Right? So now when you look at it, you need to if you're going to continue that practice, the town would need to enter into some type of an agreement, whether we purchase land to turn around on, whether we enter into a lease agreement, whether we enter into some type of document with that landowner to have access to that area that we'll be turning around in. 
So as soon as the town goes to take on an additional liability, we have to show that it's a necessity and it's in the public good and that there's a reason that we've made that decision to take on that additional effort. And that's where it gets into the whole definition of public good. What is, what is the benefit <coughs> of the town taking that step and incurring that cost and, and taking that effort? And that's all part of what we're looking at. When we look at a couple of these roads, we have dry hydrants on them. Completely easy to say, to find public good on that one, right? Because we're in areas where there's no water and a committee decided we needed a dry hydrant there. We have one that has a grant agreement with it that says the town will maintain the road. The other one was an agreement with the town in which the town provided some of the materials and the property owner did some of the construction and the agreement was always that we would maintain that area. There's no grant agreement because probably the hydrant program to get dry hydrants funded wasn't in place at that time. But, you know, those are the simple ones. So on all these other ones, we do have to look at what the cost is to the town to acquire that, to, to make it so it'll support the trucks and the turnaround. And does it make sense for the town to go through and acquire that additional real estate in whatever way it is, whether it's a right of way, a lease, a outright purchase, whatever, and make the necessary changes that are needed to get our trucks in there and turned around safely. So, so I want to, it's a much before, bigger, before, you, before you guys all ask the question, so I want to throw a couple things at you. Just, just put yourselves in our position. So do you honestly think that we should continue plowing a road because 30 years ago the town manager lived at that house and we provided services to that house? Okay. Do you honestly think we should continue to plow this? We can't turn a truck around there, okay? We plow it with a pickup truck. And we plow it because the town manager owned the house. There's some other stories that go with that same particular house. But do you think that's something we should do? I don't think so. Okay, so we're caught in some situations here. Do you think we should plow another road because some guy was chief of the fire department and at that time it was deemed public good to get him out of his house? But now that house has been sold three times, so we're still plowing the road. Why should we plow that road? So some of those decisions are really easy for me. Okay, some of these decisions are easy because of services that are on those roads. Some of these decisions are easy because there's multiple property owners adjoining these roads. I'm struggling with the tough ones here, which is why am I plowing this road that goes here to one homeowner? Okay, because I live on a road, and yeah, I chose to, to build my house out there, and there's three of us living on the road, and I could petition the town, okay, to take over my road. We built it within town specs. Personally, I don't want the town plowing my road. I don't want that road to be a public road because I don't want anybody parking on that road, okay, at 10 o'clock of the night or midnight or 2 o'clock because they can, all right, because if they want to go hunting at 4 o'clock in the morning during hunting season, I can't throw them off that road. So I'm not going to petition the town to take over a road. And, our neighbor, and my neighbors have all agreed. We're not going to do it. But, so this is the struggle. There's a lot of things that went on 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 100 years ago, okay, that are not relevant today. And so this is the struggle that I'm having is how do I make everybody happy here? Because I got people saying to me, why are you plowing that road? You know, you're not plowing my road. So what are we supposed to do? We're in a hard place here. So this is why, personally, I'm the one that asked for the delivery session. You can blame that on me, because I don't think any of us should be subject to having to tell you folks how we all voted, okay? I just think that in my mind, this is a discussion that should happen here, and you know, we make a decision as a board, and I think that's what we make. So I'm sorry if you feel different, but you know, it's just the way I feel about it. Okay, um, Chris? I have uh, just a comment and or a um, point of interest for you guys and then a question. Um, point of interest is, is that I took a moment and talked to a former lister in town just to get his perception on whether it would, the value of my property would change and he said about a 10% difference in value, property value. And this was with a former Randolph lister, someone who had been doing it for quite some time. So I'd say he's qualified to make that particular judgment. Um, the other thing I have is a question. 
for those of us who met with the town manager and other town staff and talked about sort of how we could manage whatever the issues are, is that something you guys are going to be taking into, into consideration? You know, I mean, I, I, I talked to the town manager about possibly installing guardrail. You know, it's probably something I'm willing to talk about the cost of to some extent. Um, but you know, is that are these things going to be taken into your consideration? I think that's the question. Because I don't, you know, there's because we're not having a transparent process here, um, which is within your right. I mean, it absolutely is. I understand what you're doing, and it's perfectly legit. But um, it means we don't know sort of how those the fine details are being made. Captain, have a question. Can we take the answer your question? But anything that's come in so far in the discussions and whatnot will be part of the discussion I want to do. Okay. When we get to that, though, if we look at that as an example, the discussion of whether the town invests mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. installing ta guardrail and whatnot, then we have to cross the hurdle of public good. Mm -hmm. so it's not as easy as do we just take this person up on the office? Oh, that would be, but, CJ? Thanks for me. Um, on the Economic argument, Perry and I are very much in line. We're both very, we, we, we want economic development in Randolph. Um, I'm on the budget committee, as Mr. Hildebrand knows, and um, one of my things that I'm always asking about, as they actually, Adolfo and Mike both know, is the road budget is about 1.7 million a year. It's about half of Randolph's annual operating costs. And so I'm forever going, hey, is there any way we can look and break that down a little and just see if there's anything to be gained? So when this came up, even though my road went on and came off the list, I was interested in whether we would get a good economic bump by taking all these roads, 17 roads, and no longer doing anything to them. So being a business development person, and they actually sent me to like a school and everything, I do my back of the envelope math and it looks like we actually economically end up worse off. And the reason is, uh, Chris got to it, and actually um, uh, one other person that was affected I know spoke with a lister and was given about a 15% plus or minus, so not too far off from Chris's estimate. And I had to realize that some of these roads, like ours, serves multiple residences. And obviously ours went on and came off, but I was, but because they're on your whiteboard as one house roads, and because when they came up, it was initially an economic argument. We will save money by taking the roads off. Then it became a safety argument, but back tonight, we never returned to economics. So I thought that the back of the envelope calculation might therefore be germane, and just, I'll just throw it in. If we have approximately 20 affected properties and we see the conservative 10% decrease in property values at an average revenue per property in the more rural areas of four to $6,000 in annual taxes, that decrease would be about 700 per property times about 20 is $7,000 versus a projected savings. And I'm using the original figures provided in the original board meetings of, I think it was 1200 for a net loss of about $5,800. Forgive me, I'm pulling this off the envelope in my head, but, so from an economic standpoint, we're actually better <coughs> off trying to maintain the property values and investing in the things that we know will limit um, people acquiring properties in town, such as do they have access to broadband and are they maintainable over a winter? So we've got like a backlog of old farmhouses that people aren't used to thinking about spending, you know, 10% of their time carrying wood to the wood stove. And that, you know, limits their being able to be sold. So from a, an, anal an economic analysis, I think we actually are better off leaving the roads. From a safety standpoint, if you've been a nurse for 40 years and you can't get out of your driveway. Yeah, I'm actually I, on call right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be feel terrible if you were stuck at the end of your road with a heart attack, but I would feel even worse if I was stuck at the end of my road with a heart attack. So I want you to be able to get to work. Um, so it's it's very difficult, and I recognize that you guys have a difficult situation, but I also want to point out that it's a really multifactorial calculation involving safety, involving economic uh, responsibility, 
And then lastly, do I think the town manager should have gotten an agreement that was in perpetuity with the town? 40 years ago? I don't Maybe know. Maybe not, but the two of them. As far as I know, it was under the table. It could have been. <laughs> I know there, there's no doubt in my mind it was. It, yeah. And I, there's other components of that that were the same way. Yeah. No, I hear you. And I'm not, I'm not I, I would say we should not be doing those in the future. But if they were done in the past and people in good faith sold a property and another person in good faith bought a property based on that understanding, and is now looking at the cost of either years and years of having to pay to get their road as well as their drive maintained, or possibly the cost of acquiring the equipment required to do it, and the time and the risk, I do think that the town should continue to stand by its agreement, even if it was a bad agreement, as long as there's not... We don't even know if there was an agreement. That's the problem. Right. But this might be a lawyer question. Yeah, it, yeah. it certainly could probably be one. Yeah. Anyways, thank you for letting me speak, but I did want to just address the economic just part of it. correct one thing, there's no way we could have maintained all 17 of these for $1,200 a year. The... Just to, it's, uh, oh, okay. it's more than $1,200 right. a year to maintain all those. Yes, you're right. Yeah. I was Sometimes. using the estimates from the select board meeting in 2016, was it? December 2016? It was, that was the... More than twelve hundred dollars. I think actually it was around uh, eight to ten thousand, and then uh, take so take out the state aid. I think it was a net of about seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. This whole thing is over before. Yeah. Yeah. So the, oh, yes. you have seen that number bounce all over the place. Yeah. And it then cost is only going to go up. Not that it matters. You know, it does matter, right? right. But but also, water it, rules and all that. It, also, it's not like you're gonna oh we get rid of these 17 rows so we can we need one less guy or one less truck. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna eliminate any people or any trucks. Mm -hmm. No, nope. costs just don't go down around here. Mm -hmm. That's actually an excellent point. And you're amortizing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, I don't, you know, if anybody's getting more to say, I'm just chiming in, Terry. You know, the, like, obviously, I'm doing this around town, all about economic development. They kind of also actually read an empty down street. So that says a lot. All of my clients come from out of town. There's nothing for them to do with mm -hmm. at all. They can't even eat in town anymore. Yep. It's, it's pathetic. You and can't get a coffee here at 9 o'clock in the morning. You can't eat here? Whatever. My clients can't believe the lack of what's here at this point. It's, it hasn't been this way until this year. So we spent all this time, we spent two years trying to decide whether we should get up town or not. And we haven't been spending time actually focusing on what the committee should have been focusing on. But public good, I think, is an interesting thing, too. Because as Perry, you pointed out, public good changes over time. It does. And what attracts people to central Vermont? Oh my gosh, green space and fields and privacy, all these things that small communities have worked so hard to protect. And that changes. So if we want to start shutting down this green space from revitalization, moving back into active agriculture, expanding agriculture, development, we're penalizing farmers potentially because they've been preserving green space and not developing that space so they don't have 10 houses on that road yet. This is what attracts people to places like this. And if we want to move Randolph off of that list, because this is how we don't want to continue going forward, then for business owners here and private residents as well, the tax implications, what we continue to invest in this community, how we draw employees to this community, other people here, are all being impacted by these decisions that are here, that are going to be made. And they're not easy ones. I actually I agree with that. But this is really setting a tone for what's going to happen. And if we're doing it now, because as Perry I think you mentioned, the taxes are down, the costs are going up, the economic development's not going in line. Good. Uh, let's take this step, in my humble opinion, because you're putting some nails in a coffin. And businesses and people are going to make decisions about which community they're going to locate in. And Randolph may not be on that list. And this is going to continue a downward spiral. So, my concerns. Hi, my name is Megan O'Toole. I'm uh, the chair of the select board in Green Tree, and I just also wanted to confirm that the message that I sent to you, Adolfo, made it into the rest of the board members yes. on behalf of the select board in Green Tree. Thank you. We got it. Um, Jennifer Colby from um, Randolph. 
I did submit written comment. I think you all have a letter that I submitted earlier. Um, there was something that I wanted to add to that letter, and it's related to the, well, economic development, and also um, the reduction in property value. We are two and a half years into a 25-year farm loan. Um, a reduction of 10 to 15 percent would put us underwater on a mortgage, and we're trying to build a farm business. So do we want economic development? Do we not want economic development? Because that's what we're about. I have a master's in economic development. This is what I'm all about. To, I, I feel like economic development is a theme here. Great. Would you like, like to come talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to come talk to you, but the upshot is we're a livestock farm. We need, we need equipment to be able to come in and out of our farm, much like other farms. And we are all economic drivers. And some of us are more established economic drivers, and some of us are new and trying to grow more economic development at Randall. The other piece that is not in my letter is the location of, of our farm is between two waterways. And we are a grass-based farm. Irene was not that long ago. I know exactly what happened in Irene, and we need to hold soil. So if we want to talk about not just the economic development side, but the public good side, any farm that is holding soil from running down our river valleys is public good, regardless of where it is. So I just want to make that point for our farm, but also for the other farms in the room as well. <coughs> That's the Vermont Pasture Network. I didn't tell people that. <laughs> She's the Vermont Pasture Network person. So when we were trying to manage our farm to prevent erosion, we would call Jen to come and look at it and help us make management decisions. And for the recommendation of the attorney, I would just like to suggest to the board that the board consider any roads and they be classified in class four category and the discontinued category be discussing uh, and um, deliberative session. and deliberative session and any roads that the board feels require no action be taken before entering deliberative session. That would require a motion. So at this point, we have um, some roads that there have been discussions on. There seems to be agreement with the property owners on how to move forward. So we want to look at those first. There is one road, there are multiple roads on I recommend no action or personal action. One road has an existing agreement uh, that dates back to over a year and a half ago for the installation of a dry hydrant. Um, that road is uh, Blue Goose Drive. Uh, the town had entered previously into an agreement to apply for a dry hydrant grant, and in exchange, the town had agreed to maintain the road so that it would be open for fire protection access. And the issue with Blue Goose is where we need to enter into an agreement for the, to use the area where the turnaround is. That's right. To make that one right. fully up to stuff. And the property owners have been uh, working with the highway department. They've been very open with my office on the type of work that would be needed. Uh, and if uh, I'm not mistaken, some of that work has already been completed. Phil, that's right. Yeah, work has already been completed. Motion by motion, road by road, yeah. until we get to what? Let's go for it. <coughs> Anybody want to step up to the plate? <laughs> so you want to go through those five that are at the... Uh, the no action, partial no action, right? Those that are no action, partial no action. And then the owner one, the owner recommended one. Mm. Please do. Do you want to recommend oh, uh, we could do that as well. Mm -hmm. You can add that in there. Yeah. Adolfo, can you clarify what partial no action means? Sure. Um, partial no action would be a potential decision to 
reopen the, the hearing process for a road or for two roads. If additional information has been found between um, the last hearing that we held till now, the select board has the option to essentially say we're going to reopen the hearing process for a road, and that essentially starts the process over again for that road. Okay. Um, for example, uh, one of the roads would be potentially Jackson Road. In our conversations with the residents, we were invited after the hearing to move back to Jackson Road to see the road again, speak with the residents. We then reached out to the select board, uh, reached out again to the select board in Braintree, and since then we've been working with the town of Braintree. And in the roads that cross from one town to the other, well, town of Randolph has to work with those towns to address any potential issues that exist. So, uh, in the case of Jackson, one of those uh, options could be no action, which is take no action now and, or reopen the hearing for a later, or open, reopen that road for a hearing for a later time. Essentially, we start the clock on the road and we have the recent warnings through certified mail to the residents and continue working with the town of Rancho. Is there a action that we could take on that that would keep that open and not have to go through the re notification process? For example, I think. Uh, Green Tree or Bethel for a deadline in their evaluation and not leave it open ended? I don't agree that Bethel needs to be on that list. Okay. I think we should do, in those Bethel particular, for those two situations, I think that we need to do them individually because they're in different towns. So we have blue groups, we have a grant agreement mm -hmm. for that one that we've signed that we were paying for access to the dry hydrant. We need an agreement with them. To use the land where the turnaround would be. Does anybody want to make a motion on what to do with that one? I'll make a motion that Bluegrass, we continue moving forward with um, securing the agreements we need to uh, make that one, leave that one as it is, I guess, class three. Class three. That work doesn't work. Everybody happy with that? I'll second that. Okay. A motion and a second on the blue goose. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stay. Motion okay. carries. Next, we have Clay White Road. Okay. Another one for the dry hydrant. Another one that will need basically the same thing an agreement um, because we have a truck will turn around with some private property, uh, not town owned right away. So, I want to interject one thing here. that. Hasn't been discussed, and Adelpho and I had a conversation about this this afternoon. So one thing that hasn't come up that I don't know if anybody's given any thought to was the access to school buses. So some of these roads, you know, the school buses travel them or don't travel them. And so apparently, correct me if I'm wrong, but the school district actually makes the decision whether they travel these roads or don't travel these roads. Is that correct? That's what we found in the process. Yes. Okay. But. In the future, going back to public good, okay, kids need to go to school. So I just want to just raise that point that you know if these roads are are town assets, then we need to take into consideration that they still need to be able to serve school buses. So when we're making these recommendations about how big the turnarounds should be, it's not necessarily about town truck equipment or loaders or graders. It should still take into consideration the school buses and the education piece. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I was going to say that earlier, but I forgot. So that's where I'm at with that. So I wanted to play right. I would make the same motion that we do the same thing with play right that we've done with the groups. Harry, can I interject one thing on the school buses? Sure. Having some experience with this uh, as, a, as someone who has a driver case for school? The road classification doesn't seem to have really anything to do with it, and that the, uh, the school buses do not run on Tower Hill. That troubles me, see? They never have. And, I know. And this bothers me. They took it as a shortcut that they went to run the bus on. What I understood is that as long as there was a school bus stop within, I think it was a, a mile or half a mile, we all walked to school when we were little kids, right? Consider that. Uphill both ways. Yeah, uphill both ways. Exactly. <laughs> Well, okay. I, that's just a thing that I do. You know, to it's me, thing, but to me, if we're going to continue operating roads, then you know that's a consideration that needs to happen. Because if you were to sell your property and there ends up being a situation there where maybe they lobby or maybe they can find a way to make that happen, 
you know, I think that, you know, the right to public education has a little bit of a factor here. Well, in our case, the school bus never went there. Yeah, well, I know. A lot of us drove our kids to school. <laughs> okay. They could walk to a school bus stop within half a mile. Yeah, and 20 below zero. I second the motion. I'll both ways. I second the motion. We're not going to settle on that. Okay. okay. So. We have a motion and a second on Clay White. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Mike did. Mike did. Thank you. Opposed? Motion carries. Palmer Road on Route 14. Understand this correctly. The agreement is for Route 14 to the other side of the bridge to remain Class 3. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, would go to is it Class 4 or Trail that we're going on that one. It could go either way. It could go either right? way. So it's a board decision right. on that one. At that point, we the, the entire length of Palmer Road is. Uh, 0.15 miles. If the select board were to decide to make it a partial, um, or make a partial decision on it, it would keep approximately 0.11 miles class three, and the remainder, which would be 0.04, it could be a trail, it could be class four, or it could be reverted back to the property owners. Um, you, I'm sorry, you were aware that Palmer is. Uh, access to the lands of the people that own Blue Bruce. That's and also why we're looking at keeping it as for a trail. It's still yeah. a public access. Oh, so okay. what we need, this one here, the challenge is that the trucks are going up. This is the one they were going around back and plowing right up next to the wellhead, pushing the snow down over the tank and backing in by the shed. Mm -hmm. um, I have to go and take care of the bridge. I'm going to go class four beyond that. Still keeps it public. I think that's Access. one nice to look at going to double click to determine where that line is because there's a few options. Really. Still have to secure, you're right, we still have to secure a turnaround space on the portion of the property. Mm -hmm. She also want to maintain the right of way to be able to do the maintenance on the bridge. Mm -hmm. So you want to be at least a certain distance on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, 100 years from now, somebody's got to go in there. You don't want to have to acquire maintenance right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just chat about the distance on that one. It's going to be as easy. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson Road. The so. topic on this is to take no action and to so. agree to reopen the yeah. hearing on it. Yeah, that's, I'd make the motion that we take no action on Jackson Drive until we. Uh, have conversations with the town of Rishri on the remaining portion of their jurisdiction. Yeah, reopen the public hearing. That's my motion. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Police Dell Drive. This one the property owner requested that we discontinue it. Drive. You skipped over London? We did. Because we didn't think it, it's not the same as Jackson. Right. I well, there's a hit of order. Um, or I mean, I thought order. we needed more conversation. You reached out. You, we need the more conversation. The, Correct. Because what they own and what they own. Okay. Yeah. So, which one did you just jump to then? Please still drive. Please still drive. During the site visit, the property owner asked us to discontinue it. Yeah. Right. Simple and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll make the motion that we uh, <sighs> discontinue Blaisdell Drive as per request of the landowner. A second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. <laughs> Any others that folks want to make a decision now? Um, we have agreement on rain belts. Okay, what, well. We have um, agreement with the landowner on rain belt, correct? Uh, an, an agreement to enter into an agreement. Uh, we don't have anything written down, but uh, the owner has agreed to. Flowers to enter the property if necessary, and that is one 
on the road where there is necessary public infrastructure that uh, there's, there's a culvert there that receives water from a culvert on Spooner Road. And if this road were to not maintain at least the culvert and water coming down from Spooner Road would essentially completely affect Rainbow Drive. The recommendation would be to the very least allow the town to continue to maintain that culvert because otherwise it could place the culvert in Spooner Road or the sub base of Spooner Road in, in danger of potential erosion. So to maintain the stormwater mm -hmm. as well as everything else, we need to be able to maintain the culvert that's mm -hmm. in Rainbow Drive, but we can maintain that culvert by being a class changing four. it to a class four. And the, la and the landowners are okay with it being a class four road? Yes. Their concern is the culvert. Anybody else? So are we looking to reclassify that, put an agreement in on the stormwater? Is that what the... The recommendation is, well, it, it, we would just need to reclassify to a class four. Well, if we're if we still reclassify it, we have the rights to maintain the culverts. Well, well, we're still responsible right. for the stormwater. You said there's an agreement for an agreement. Oh, the, so. the, oh sorry, the, it should have been more specific. The agreement that the property owner is willing to allow us to, to enter is to continue to use the road and turn on the private property to then come back out. Because otherwise, the, any vehicle that would show up for repairs would have to back out onto Route 14. And so that's the maintaining the stormwater. That's the maintaining the stormwater. Okay. Route 12, right? Yeah. Route 12. And there's also the added danger of reversing on Rainbow Drive and that immediately adjacent to it is Spooner Roads come, down in. come access. So then, right. <coughs> you need to be able to exit driving out mm -hmm. of that, not backing up. Okay, okay well, assuming that we, we have landowner agreement, I reckon that I move that we reclassify Rainbow Drive to Class 4. I'll second it. Motion to second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Uh, and then the other one we have that is right, pretty easy is up in uh, Randolph Center off Ski Toad. With that town um, highway, is that 70? 70. 70. And that one we've. Uh, I really haven't heard anything from anybody up there but the state actually to knock on our door and said, hey, I don't think so. <laughs> the property owners have, have been have visited my office uh, before the hearing and have also spoken to me here. afterward. I'm wonderful. Oh. Trini's uh, right, the state, um, in reviewing our, our reclassification effort, came to the town and said that there is some considerable issues with the entire length of Town Route 7, just in the condition that it's in and that it's essentially been reclaimed to, the majority of it has been reclaimed to soil and drain earth. Grass. Right. So. 
Uh, so there's not much left over at that point, right? No, but the part that is left over is the two home only access in. I mean, we can't access because the way they did the East Delta Road, the town built that up so high, we'd never be able to come down that hill anyway. So to access our two drives, that is... The road stays. And so we don't go in there and just seed over the road. The actual surface stays. It just becomes the property of the residents on the road. So we wouldn't say find another, you know, we don't then say you've got to find another way in or whatever. The, it, the ownership of the actual land reverts to the property owners. And then in the state statute, there's a section that actually says if there's more than one, then all of them have a right of way over that to get to their property too. So nobody gets landlocked or anything of it. So, so do we, so is there agreement with the landowners for that road that that's okay to, no? Mm -hmm. So shouldn't that be part of our deliberative session? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all the ones that we have. to the board if the board is to choose to enter into deliberative session uh, that it would, that it would consider inviting me and Phil Morgan the town I was superintendent into the deliberative session I'll make the motion to enter deliberative session inviting Mr. Morgan and Tom Andrew Dolpho Second. Motion in the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stay. Motion carries. Okay. Aye. Aye. So that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you.